Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Rick Thompson. And I'm Landon Oaks. Landon, this morning I wanted to talk about something that comes up when we're developing dashboards for companies, and that is sometimes companies will be trying to create dashboards around what you could call vanity metrics sometimes, metrics that maybe are impressive, page views or something, but don't actually move the needle for the business, or other metrics that are telling you things but aren't telling you the things you need to know to uh, be able to achieve your goals. And um, often when we first engage with a client, um, they have some idea about what metrics they want to use for building their dashboards, but they can be off just a little bit. And so we end up starting with, okay, what are the business goals? What are the biggest problems you're dealing with? And then think about what are the metrics that can help get to that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's essentially the, the beginning of it, right? Is, you know, what are you trying to solve in the first place? Um, and that's harder, right? you know, harder than a lot of people would think to do. Uh, so, you know, it takes some skill to, to come up with that. Definitely does. I mean, I think, you know, most executives, uh, if they're paying attention to their business, can tell you where they're having problems. Mm -hmm. But to actually figure out what are the metrics you need or the measures or KPIs you need to track in order to be able to make corrections and improve towards your goal and not be sort of looking so far in the rearview mirror that it's too late to do something about it, that can be tricky. And so I think that's when I when I think about the vanity trap or the the sort of useless metric trap, that's something that happens. And so in order to do a good job of getting to those, um, it's helpful to do a deep discovery and make sure that you've got the right people at the table. So yeah. to start with, you want the owner of the processes and the area that the goal involves. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, you'll get them at the table, you know, help help get kind of an initial view of, of what we want this to look like. Um, but even from there, you know, we we found it very helpful to get the people who are like boots on the ground, right? The ones doing it. So, you, you know, you don't want them to drive it completely because uh, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you know, your, your leadership goals are being met, but they can give you some really valuable insights to, to what exactly is happening and how these metrics can be even better. Yeah, you make a really good point. We've definitely had a situation where uh, stakeholders that we're working with um, were pretty sure they knew exactly what the dashboards and metrics and KPIs uh, were that were needed in mm -hmm. order to improve things. And then when we launched those dashboards and the people on the ground using them started using them. We found out they were off in some way. I mean, you really want to, you've got to have metrics and measures that allow the person to know what to do when they're off, yeah. right? It's not that helpful to see a number and say, hmm, looks like, uh, you know, our, our call to cash number is not where we want it to be. We, we need it to be less days than it is. But if you don't dig further to figure out, okay, what are the what are the proximate and root causes mm -hmm. of what might be affecting that, then the people on the ground who need to make changes to improve that may not be able to do that without a lot more thinking and digging, which is okay. But it's better if you could look at that and see yeah. very quickly. Oh, here's what we need to here's what we need to do here. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it can be a little discouraging too, you know, seeing the that number going down, but you don't really know what to do about it, right? So having the tools to easily find what can I do to, to change this is is huge, and it's it's uh, really pivotal to, to any dashboard. Yeah. So when you're when you're starting a dashboard project, super important to I start with what is the business goal here, or what is the particular problem we're trying to solve but then really do a root cause analysis on mm -hmm. what affects that number in the business. So it, it, you don't have to actually probably get to the root every time. You need, to, though, to get to good proximate causes. Yeah, so yeah. if you're thinking about why is this not working right, all right, why might it not be working right? And then you can start having metrics that help you get to that. And, and I think, as I said, uh, you know, the main thing to let you know if you've got the right numbers is when you look at the dashboard is something, if something is off, you know just who to call mm -hmm. or just what process to go work on without having to do a lot more research. So, you know, people, people see problems in the business and they're working on them, but often they have a lot of competing problems to work yeah. on, a lot of competing goals. And so if you can make it really easy to know what to work on, 
that, that makes a dashboard a true winner. Yeah, exactly. All right, pause for a sec. Sorry, Nicole. Okay, I have an idea. One of the key ways to get to the right metrics is to realize that as good a job as you do in discovery and planning, you're probably going to need to iterate oh, yeah. once you start working on it. So you'll get that first dashboard and look at it and then do the test. Do that test. Is it, is it intuitive? Do I know what to work on now? Um, and if not, you need to dig further and keep mm -hmm. working on it. And something we found, we've talked about it before, but we found in BI for ourselves and for our clients is that you have to expect to iterate. Sometimes you don't really know what you're looking for until you see that first dashboard, that first set of data, and then the light bulb goes off. Yeah. Or you look at it and you say, okay, now I'm able to see something starting to go off here, but do I know what to do now? If not, you need to iterate. And that's, that's one of the reasons we changed our business model from doing discrete projects that start and end and then sort of assume, all right, the dashboard's perfect. We did discovery. We had a perfect yeah. design. Um, we, we did a six-week project. We rolled it out. Um, you're not done, usually. <laughs> yeah. No matter how good a job you did on discovery and design, um, the users are going to see that and immediately start to realize, oh, if we just had this, we would really be able to affect this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, even like that, you know, what we found is spending more time just getting to the numbers on the page um, and a little bit less time, like discovery and design is still important, but a lot of people can get caught up there for too long. Um, you know, and if you can accelerate getting these numbers onto a page, you know, that really speeds things up significantly, um, which which has been just great for, for a lot of the clients we've worked with. Yeah. So in other words, get, get a minimum viable product out quickly mm -hmm. and then iterate from there. So instead of spending six weeks and saying, ta-da, it's finished, spend a week yeah. and say, all right, here's the minimum viable product, not finished yet, directionally correct. Let's start thinking about what makes this better. Yeah. And that, that's when the light bulbs go off. You know, that's when you start to actually get to that that good dashboard at the end of the day you're going to want to use. Yeah, and it's amazing. We're, we're good at this. We're good at building dashboards. We do it all day, every day for lots of people, and we still do this internally. So we'll oh, have yeah, an yeah. idea of something we want to affect. We build the dashboard, do a minimum viable product, and almost immediately realize, oh, actually, I didn't need that detail. I needed this detail and start getting it right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great process. You know, even as a developer, it's 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 better to work with, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess the, uh, the the point of what we're talking about is watch out for, first of all, for picking metrics that seem interesting because mm -hmm. they move. You know, page views is the one that, uh, that I like to use as, as an example because it can be exciting. You know, oh my gosh, we had 5,000 page views yesterday. But if it's not actually resulting in marketing qualified leads coming to your business, may not be the metric you need to be focusing on. Maybe one of them, maybe approximate cause for something you're trying to affect, but you need to keep digging and get it right. So in addition to that, once you think you have them, get a minimum viable product, start mm -hmm. using it, and the light bulbs will go off. You Start iterating it, and you'll get it to where you need it to be. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, good discussion. Thanks, Landon. Thank you. All right, now I want to give her a I have to remind myself to tell her that <clears throat> clapper.